Hey y'all, this is Voluptuously Skinny and I'm here reporting on my post-op week 16 weigh-in. And I am so excited. These weeks have been going by so quickly now. Initially at the beginning, it was just like, Lord, when am I going to get used to this? You know, how am I going to manage? But they're just going by week after week so quickly, especially once you get back into the groove of things. So anyway, let me get started. My high weight was 369.9. My surgery weight was 329.6. My current weight is 274.6, which means a loss of 4.4 pounds from last week. And y'all, I'm going to tell you in a minute, but I've been working at it. I worked for that 4.4 pounds. So anyway, since surgery, that's 55 pounds and overall that's 95.3 pounds. And so I am only 4.5 pounds away from my mini goal of three, excuse me, of 269.9, which means, which is why I just messed up, which means that was, that would be a hundred pounds that will be gone y'all. Not 369.9, but 269.9. So 100 pounds gone in a minute, y'all. I, I will be so excited. And y'all, I am really, truly working at it. So um, I did post a video that shows how I get my protein in. It also shows some examples of meals that I have and um, some of the amounts of protein that go into each of those meals. If you have any questions, y'all just leave it in the comments. And you know, as with all my videos, I will answer every single comment. Sometimes it may take me a little bit, um, but it shouldn't take me over a week or so to get your comments answered. Um, this past week, we've been uh, having devotion and we've been praying a lot. And so I haven't been able to get on electronics as much, but, um, I will, I, I will get there. I'm finding time this weekend to make sure that I'm getting on there and answering any questions that you guys may have. Um, wanted to also, again, based on that video of my protein and how I get it in, if you want to join me on my fitness pal, my, um, user ID is one joy in heart. So that's one J O Y N H R T. I would be more than happy to have you. Um, that way we can support each other. So anyway, protein, y'all know it was down this past week because I wasn't feeling well. So it's back up now. My protein, average protein is 89 per day. Well, I didn't get in 89 per day, but average overall is 89 grams. And then calories, my calories are up. <laughs> they are up, and I will tell you why in just a second. They are up to 798 calories on average a day, um, sometimes more, sometimes a little less. But y'all, y'all gonna be so proud of me. So, the gym finally opened. They opened on December 31st. So I went and checked it out on December 31st. I did not get to go on December 31st, but y'all, I have been every day since. So I'm challenging myself. I read this on uh, one of the Facebook challenges is that um, a young lady who was also sleeved, she did 30 days and she said it just changed her life as far as how she feels about fitness and what she's capable of doing. So I decided you know what, I'm going to take her up on that challenge and I'm going to do it too. So 30 days. So this past week, I got in five days of increased heart rate activity. Yes. You see this beam? <laughs> yes, I am so excited about that. And not only did I get in five days, but my son also, my youngest one, Dion, RVD fan something, I can't remember what his thing is, but I'll, I'll post it. Anyway, he got, also got in exercise every day too. And so I'm so excited about that. Anyway, as far as takeout, didn't go to any takeout. I did go to one little get together, a potluck with friends. And um, I think I'll talk about that. Um, well, I'll just talk about it now. I potlucks and anything like that. I know that I'm going to have to rehearse in my mind exactly what I'm going to do. And unless I rehearse in my mind exactly what I'm going to do, I'm not going to necessarily lose control, but I spend time grazing and I don't want to spend time grazing. Um, I want to get what I, I can get 
and then that be it. So, um, yeah, I've got to work on that. I've definitely got to work on those areas where I go and those, those, uh, parties or get togethers where I go, where there is a kind of a buffet of food. I don't like buffets anyway, in regular restaurants because they make you hurt yourself. So I stopped going to them quite a while ago, but now I, I see I'm replacing them with these little get togethers by grazing. So anyway, I'm going to work on that. As far as new foods are concerned, I had broccoli, I've had uh, some crackers, and I've had grapes, and all of those I did fine on, of course, with those raw foods, and um, with the raw foods, they tend to kind of work your digestive system, so that's the only issue that I've had with that, but I think that that's probably normal given the circumstances of, you know, only having a small portion of your stomach to help digest those raw foods. So challenges. I don't know about anybody else, but do you find yourself having a hard time accepting compliments? Like, do you feel a little embarrassed sometimes? Sometimes I feel a little embarrassed. And so what I've had to do was, like the pastor said, I have had to guard my self-talk and make sure that I'm speaking life into myself uh, more than anybody else is speaking life into me. And so therefore it is act it has actually helped me to receive those compliments much better. And so now I just tell people, I receive that. Thank you so much. I appreciate you noticing, but before, Ooh, it's kind of hard. And, um, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. The other thing is, being open about my surgery. It's not necessarily a challenge because I'm making YouTube videos, posted on Facebook, I'm part of so many groups. Anytime somebody asks me, I tell them, but um, now I'm finding, what I find challenging is when to be open about it. So I don't always, especially when I'm with, I have a couple of friends who other people do not know that they've had the surgery. And they've lost weight too. And so I have to find myself making sure that I'm balancing sharing my own story without revealing their story as well. So that it has been a challenge this week, you know, on at least once, once it's been a challenge at least twice this week. So I'm working on that and, um, water. Yeah, I have been so thirsty lately and I think it's probably because I've been working out that I'm really gulping, 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 gulping water. And so I have to make sure that I'm taking my time. I gulped this big bolus of water the other day and it literally made me sick. <laughs> um, it was almost like I felt like I was going to dump. So be careful of that. Be mindful of that. I didn't know that that was something that could happen, but it did make me feel a little ill. And then um, the last challenge that I've been thinking about this week, my friends and I have talked about those who have had the surgery, what weight do they want to get down to? And initially I was saying 140 pounds, but I was looking at some pictures and I was thinking, Lord, I've never even in my adult life, in my teenage life, been 140 pounds. In fact, the smallest that I can remember being was when I was 15 and I was about 175. So I don't want that to be a deterrent to how small I get or how much weight I want to lose, but I do want to be mindful about what's realistic. And I still, you know, that vein is in me, the flesh part of me, the fleshly part, um, still, I, I still want to look good. I don't want to look emaciated and you know, like I need a sandwich or something. So anyway, tell me what y'all think about that. When is it enough weight loss? In fact, one of my coworkers this week told me that at 275 pounds or 274 pounds, that she felt like I had lost enough and that I should stop, that I looked really good right now where I, where I am. 
And another coworker was like, girl, you done paid all that money. You better lose as much as you can. But it's funny how people see you now after losing, you know, this amount of weight and they think you should just stop, that you're getting skinny and you really aren't skinny. You know, you're not even at a healthy weight yet. Some of you are, but I'm not. And so, you know, I had to speak to her and let her know, hey, this is not healthy for me. You know, I'm still 275 pounds. I'm still considered morbidly obese. Yeah. And um, it's not enough. And it's not enough until I feel healthy, until I'm able to rid myself of all medications, of all ailments, of anything, you know, that I'm feeling until I can gain uh, control over and, and not even so much me gaining control, but until, yeah, I guess so until I can gain control over, you know, those things that are around me that cause me to eat, that is, um, I don't even know if that's the right thing to say, but anyway, I still haven't lost enough weight. I still haven't lost enough weight. I'm still uh, working at it, and I will be working at it until I get at least under uh, 175 or low. So, non-scale victory, yes. So, this weekend, my sister, well, actually, what didn't have anything to do with her, she left a lot of clothes here back in the spring, and she's like a 16, 18 and I went through all of those clothes, y'all. And so now I am getting into, I'm still in my 20s solidly, but I'm getting into some of her 18 shirts. I organized all that stuff into different bags where it's 14, 16, 16, 18s, the 18s. And so y'all, I probably will not have to buy any clothes for a while. And I'm praying Hopefully, I will be set for the spring. And I told you guys before in a couple of uh, videos back that I had not planned on buying any clothes. And when I tell you, when I put that in the atmosphere, God has truly blessed me. I told you I got clothes from a friend. I got jeans and I got slacks that I've been wearing to church and jeans that I've been wearing to work on Fridays. I, my secret Santa got me an outfit that I thought I just looked hot in. And matter of fact, I'm gonna put that picture in at the end of this video. I thought I looked too cute and I was so excited when I saw it. I was a little worried that it wouldn't fit, but y'all, it was perfect. It was actually really perfect. So I'm so thankful for her for that. I'm not gonna mention her name because I don't know if she most people, but you know what? She wouldn't care. Katha, I love you. I am so blessed to have friends like you guys and coworkers like you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to my sister, Shiana, thank you. Even though she didn't know that I've sorted all her clothes out now, even, even one of the outfits, I look good in that too. I wore a um, jumpsuit of hers. I'm post that one too, because I thought I was so cute. So thank you guys for sharing that with me. And, um, Shiana, I know you're not going to be upset anyway because you love me so much and I love you so much. So thank you. Anyway, um, just closing, my pastor this week, of course, with it being the top of the new year, I'm trying to put this up closer to me. So, of course, with this Three, being uh -oh, two, two, one. the top of the new year, um, of course, with this being the top of the new year, Pastor Watts, he was preaching about our gifts and our talents and just how we should use them. And so I just wanted to say that, um, you know, another thing he said was being average is the enemy of our lives and that we should never be average, that we should always strive for more. I wanted to tell you, don't settle for anything. Be determined, be courageous to use this gift or this opportunity that God has given you to work in your purpose, to work your purpose out. Pastor told us that in Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, that when God gives us gifts, that those gifts are irrevocable, that he'll never call them back, even when we don't use them. Because sometimes we're not even in a place uh, in our lives where we can use them or where we have a desire to use them or where we have the mindset to use them. And so I am now of the belief that this gift with this, this opportunity that God has given me, I'm going to stir up my gifts. 
I'm going to stir up my gifts. There have been some gifts that I have packed in the closet, in a suitcase, up under some old rugs, and sitting behind my vacuum. And so I, this year, y'all, I'm, I'm taking them out. I want to be able to work in my purpose. And so I am really thanking God and thanking the Holy Spirit for leading me into that purpose and for allowing me to use this gift as a testimony, this opportunity as a testimony to put out there for other people. Today, I had the opportunity of speaking for a brief moment. We had a graduation, a bariatric graduation. Yes, bariatric graduation, 2016. And there were about 100 individuals there who were sharing their story. And their stories were similar, but so unique. And the power that was in that room from other individuals who lost that weight, they stepped out on faith, had the surgery, whichever surgery it was, ruin Y, the um, sleeve. I don't think anybody had had the lap band and nobody had mentioned the duodenal switch, which I had planned to mention in another video, but I'm not sure if I'm doing that video. But anyway, that's a, a newer procedure. But they le they stepped out on faith. They had the surgery. They lost the weight. And oh my gosh, the life that they've gained. I mean, from being able to work, from being able to lose weight, go overseas to serve our country the way they had done in the past, um, to be children's mothers and children's fathers again. I mean, that is a book. That is a testimony. It was just so enlightening. And I was just so proud of everybody who shared their story. And all I kept doing, because I get nervous sometimes when I'm talking in front of people. And I was even nervous then. And I just kept praying, praying, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me the words to say, give me the words to say. And when I stood up there, I started speaking. And I'm going to tell you, it was of God. And talked about my testimony and how I've been saved and how now I'm living a life that is an example for others and how it's an example for my children and how my children have received their, pa their passionate, their patient, their caring mother back. Y'all, you can't beat this surgery. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. So if you're thinking about it, stop thinking about it and just do it. So the Holy Spirit, I just kept asking, God, give me the words to say. Give me the words to say because I don't know. And I don't know what I'm going to share. And I stood up there and I mean, it, it all, it just spilled out. People were laughing. People were clapping. I mean, it just spilled out in just that short message. And I thank God for that. So anyway, y'all, I'm already way too long. I'm so long all the time. Um... I want to say, what are you going to do differently this year? What are you going to do differently in 2016 so that you take a leap of faith and so that you take a leap towards your purpose? You're going to take a leap of faith to do what it is that you need to do, whether it's take the surgery, whether it's to get back on track from the surgery where you've gotten off track, or whether it's to to be thankful for the gift that God gave you or whether you're losing weight naturally, whatever it is, what are you going to do so that you can take that leap of faith and then work towards your purpose? So I love you guys. I am always praying for you, always praying for you. I'm always praying for myself. So I just thank y'all. I want y'all to pray. I want y'all to pray for me, <laughs> help me stay on track because like I said, there are times where I get very off. Um, but I, I'm constantly striving, striving to do my best. So thank y'all. I love y'all. Peace out, baby. Mwah. <laughs>